Hello, Hitler's Gaming here, uh, bringing you another video, and uh, this one is going to be mostly on paper, uh, and just kind of a thought experiment. I woke up this morning and I thought, how far can science go? How much tank does a Varger have? What can you do to put more tank on a Varger? So we are going to see just how tanky they are uh, and what exactly that means. Uh, and along the way, hopefully you guys will get to learn some tricks for increasing a ship's uh, uh, tank and making it more viable in combat in different ways. Uh, and hopefully uh, we'll have some pros and cons to, you know, active tank versus buffer tank and maybe uh, a couple things. But we want to see the scientists will never, uh, never stop to ask if they should, just that we can. Uh, I'm probably not going to actually buy this ship, but it is fun to play with EFT and see what can be done in the game, which adds to a lot of fun. By the way, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of early Nika petting, because this is our kitty Nika, and since I just started talking, she showed up. Uh, we're going to have a largely unedited video today. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and jump right in. I got my uh, main right here, Buck or Bash. We have a Varger simulated. I have other fits that we use uh for the burger but for this purpose i'm going to start with just a basic hole that has you know mag stabs on it and a bastion already on it so we can kind of get right into it uh so for base uh burger has a uh, bit of resist it's got tier two uh or t2 resist what we call t2 resist it's a little bit better than tier one resist for uh, marauders but it's not quite as good as like say a vagabond or a uh, or a wall they they just it, it doesn't quite have the tier two resist but it has greater than zero em resist to start out with which is really good so the reason that i wanted to do this with the varger is if we hit the little eye icon here uh vargers get a shield rep bonus uh, per skill level on Marauders. And at 7.5%, that means train to 5, uh, the Marauder skill gives us a 37.5% bonus. Which is pretty nifty. That sounds like fun. Uh, all of the Marauders have a uh, the exact same tanking bonus. Uh, the Kronos and Paladin has uh, 7.5 armor. And the Golem has also this exact same 7.5 shield boost bonus. Uh, the other thing uh, that makes Marauders insanely good at tanking is they get to use a siege module, uh, which has a bonus of increasing resistances by 30% across the board. It is a f effectively another hardener that does not suffer from stacking penalties. Uh, and then it's got a shield boost and an armor boost bonus of 100%, meaning that the shield rep will rep double what it should. Uh, so that, that, is, that is very, very big. It's a uh, big deal. It also has the same armor rep bonus. So regardless of if you do shields or armor, um, we'll have two things. So there's two ways to look at this. How much tank can we put on it and make it cap stable? And how much tank per second can we put on it if we do not care about cap stability? Uh, so first, we're just going to not care about cap stability. Uh, and the other rule that I'm going to put on it is a single repper only. Uh, there are ways that we can put multiple reppers and just do some really crazy raw number things. Uh, but I want to do single repper bonuses. So we are going to start with base. Uh, we're going to go ahead and modules, look at shields. Uh, or is it shields? Come on, Nika. I love you. But I can't have you on the desk while I'm making a video. Um, shield... We're going to go with a repper. Uh, we'll start with an extra large. So the extra large repper, uh, just a standard tier 2, gives us a shield boost rate of 189 HP per second. This is before resistance. Uh, but if we put on, if we overheat that, it gets to 245. That's quite a lot. Now, what if we turn on the Bastion module? We're at 379 HP a second with an average resist profile of a about 50%. Because again, the Bastion module gives us the uh, additional 30% resist, which is a big deal. Uh, so we're at 48, 51, 58, 65. Uh, I do have a little calculator and I'll show you that later. Uh, but at 50% resist, uh, we can easily double this number and say that we have about 800 or just under 800 uh, HP per second. 
And this is just a tier two wrapper. What if we upgrade this to a faction? So we got Republic Fleet goes to 379. 433 for the Dread Garistas. 433 HP per second. Uh, which again, uh, resistances are unchanged, so we don't mess with that. Uh, let's go ahead and check out Dead Space. So my. Ah! I don't fall. She just like totally failed. She's trying to go for my hand. Uh, so let's say that we did a Pythum X type, uh, which then gives us 635 HP per second. And this is just raw with the one shield booster. No hardeners or anything. Uh, well, we'll get into resist and, and, and what they mean as we move on. Uh, so if we go Pythum X type, it has more. So there is a trade off here. Uh, between Pythum and Gistum. So the Pythum uh, takes more CPU, more power grid, and more capacitor to run, but it gives you more HP per second. The Gistum is kind of like the um, the more efficient, or the, uh, the Tesla of shield boosters, where we get less EHP per second, but it takes less CPU, power grid, and capacitor to run. So when we're going for a cap stable fit, we'll probably be using... Uh, the Gistum or the Gistum's big brother. Uh, and when we go for the um, for the non-cap stable fit, we're going to go for the, the Pythum or the Pythum's big brother. Now, what I don't play with very often is these officer modules. Uh, and if we look at an estimals, it gives us 647. Hakeem's is 455, 523, 570. Uh, it looks like 616, 647. Estimals would be the strongest repper money can buy however buying them is seven billion isk just for a single estimals repper which is insane but that is so much hp per second 647 now there's another thing that we can do to increase our shield boost rate and that is that we can put on a boost amplifier and again gistum is the uh diet version and pythum is the uh, non-diet version. Uh, so with Pith Pithum, if we end up with one shield booster, or one shield boost amplifier, uh, we end up at 899 HP per second uh, going for Pithum. And then I believe, Officer, we would go Estimals for the big one. That is 905. Again, the cost of these is absurd. So we do run into an issue uh, when we start using shield boost amplifiers because they actually suffer stacking penalties with the Bastion module. Uh, because when you have two bonuses at the same time for certain stats, uh, stacking penalties take into effect. So the first one will have 90% uh, effectiveness. So at uh, at 45.7, we'd have 90% of that. It'd be more like 41 to 43. I can't remember the, the numbers. I think the second one's like 73. Third one's like 50. And the fourth one would be like 50%. So these have diminishing returns uh, as you add more. Uh, we are at 905 HP per second. Now, if we don't care about our capacitor, there are also some rigs that we can use. Uh, and we only have two rig slots uh, to amplify this. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and go into shield rigs. Large shield rigs. And uh, there are two shield rigs that have a large impact on the way that these hardeners work. And I'm sorry... You guys love the cat, and so do I. So here's a little bit more cat for you guys. She just wants me to pet her. That's all she wants. It's Nika. You spell it N-I-K-A. And uh, if you guys give me 50 likes in the first day of this video, on the premiere, if we get 50 likes, I'll make a video explaining the story of how this cat picked me. Because this cat did pick me. I promise you she did. Uh, and that's part of why she loves me so much. Because I didn't pick this cat. I I I'm stuck with her because she picked me. Um, and I love her very dearly. So if you guys want to hear that story, uh, give me 50 likes and I'll make a video about why or how we ended up with our cat. Uh, since you guys like her so much. Alright, back to uh, the fitting. So next, uh, we can put TT sh shield rigs on. Operational solidifiers, what do these do? These make your cycle time 20% faster on the repper. So this means you consume a lot more capacitor 
but it's 20% faster. That's such a big deal. Um, so we're going to go ahead and put two of those on. There is a capacitor safeguard, which has a minus 15% capacitor need, which will be useful later in making the uh, something that's more cap stable when we go for the cap stable side of this. Uh, but 15% speed is, or 15% less cap is a big deal when you're trying to uh, solve cap issues. So we're going to go ahead and do a, a double solidifier. Operational solidifier. Where did it go? There we go. One, two. This puts us up to 1,414 raw HP per second with 48, 51, 58, 65 resists. We'll say an average of 50. We can double this number. This is 2,800 DPS of tank. And we still have one, two, three, four mid slots to play with. This is getting pretty crazy. Um, and we still don't have. I, we're, we're just going to go down the line and, and, and add the things for the funds. We are going to have to go into a program called PIFA because I don't have these tools available and I can't undock the ship to get all the, the bursts and effects on the, um, on the, the ship, if that makes sense. Anyways, now we got hardeners. So hardeners uh, will add resistance, and uh, we'll go ahead and go to my monitor. I have this equation here uh, put into a graphing calculator, and it is 100 over 100 minus x. Um, how resistance is uh, calculated for your EHP and for uh, like how much effective tank you have uh, say you have, you know, 75% resistance, uh, you would take the 100 resistance because that 100 minus 100 is base. And then subtract X is how far X we go, and we end up with this graph. So if we, have, if we put 75 in for X, we have 25 less, and then we divide that by 100, we end up with 0.25, meaning that we have 4X to tank, because if you 1 over 25 is times 4. Uh, you, you, you take 25% of the damage, you effectively are at... Um, you effectively are at um, what is the term? Uh, you, you take one quarter damage, so your 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 effective HP per second number would be four times what that sheet displays. Uh, so this is how this calculator is used. And as you notice, as we approach, so as we go from seventy five and above, uh, we could take our resistance percentage. So at fifty, we would get two. We would multiply the number by two. Uh, at 75, we would multiply the number by 4. At 90, we actually get to multiply by 10. At 95, we get to multiply it by 30, I believe? No. 95, it's something like uh, 25 or 20. I, I can't remember. But it, it, as you approach 90, this number gets astronomical. But this is uh, how effective your tank gets and why adding additional resist. So say from... Cat, you, 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 you can't step on that. Come on. Uh, so adding additional resistances uh, beyond, uh, say, adding an additional 50% from 75 to 80 is 50% more tank because it, it effectively makes you take 50% less damage with that same number increased. Cat, you're on the desk. So uh, that's why I use this graph uh, to kind of make an approximation of about how many times uh, we can multiply this number as we add resistances. So knowing that, moving forward, we're going to begin adding resists to this build. Uh, we're going to go ahead and go back to my main. And I am going to go ahead and add the first thing, uh, which sounds a little weird, uh, but a damage control. Uh, what we learn is that the damage control actually has stacking penalties against the Bastion module. Uh, so if we go for the off officers, this is going to get a little crazy. Uh, but there's, I don't know which one's the best. So I'm going to roll through here and whichever one has the highest EHP is the one we're going to grab. So it looks like, uh, it's a tie between Cormax and Unit W, uh, appear to have the same. They might have different fitting, uh, there, it looks like to be identical. So we're going to go ahead and go with Unit W. Our resists become 58, 60, 66, 72. Conservatively on the monitor, we can go and say that uh, we have an average of 65. This brings our tank uh, to 65 average DPS. Now we can, uh, we'll, we'll say 67. 
because then we can multiply this number by three instead of two. Uh, and we end up with 3,000 plus 2,000, about 4,000 effective uh, HP worth of tank. Uh, and then we get to add in hardeners. Uh, so we're not going to add in whole hardeners, shield hardeners. We're going to go ahead and go shield hardeners, multi-spectrum. So if we throw on two tier twos, we end up with that average resist coming up to 75. Uh, that magic number where we get to multiply by four. And 80 means we get to multiply by five. Uh, so what if we upgrade these uh, to something a bit better? Uh, say we did... Uh, these are extremely expensive when you go up. Uh, so the again, the Gistum is the diet version. Pithum is the uh, fancy version. Uh, so we go dead space. Pithum A-types are the big baddies. We add two of these. Uh, we actually end up with an average resist of around 82, meaning we can multiply this by 5 now pretty easily. Now we get to the point where... Because we have two hardeners, two things, we're running into uh, stacking penalties a lot. So to avoid stacking penalties, we kind of change things up. Uh, most Marauders would have a prop mod or a cat battery of some kind, uh, but we're going to go full tank. Uh, so let's go ahead and not only make those um, dead space, but let's go officers. I believe Estimals we discovered was the high grade. So Estimals was a high grade, one, two. Uh, we are at 85 average resist. Uh, let's go reference our sheet here and uh, realize that 85 means we get to multiply by 6.5. So if we go ahead and uh, take our calculator in game, take our magic number here, calculator, abilities, calculator, and we go 1414 times 6.5 equals an effective EHP tank, uh, Omni tank, of around 9,000 HP per second. That is unreal. That That's a Dreadnought with capital guns. Or poorly skilled Dreadnought with capital guns. That's, that's almost tanking a super. But again, the ship doesn't move, so they can do perfect tracking and use capital guns to shoot you. That is two or three Marauders firing at you. That is... That is a lot of DPS. That's a lot. Now, we get to plug our holes. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at our resistance profiles. It looks like we have 87, 89, and then EM appears to be the lowest. So we're going to go ahead and plug the EM, uh, EM resist with a uh, officer. We'll go estimals again. We got 90, and then we're going to go ahead and plug the thermal resist with the, the last slot here. Uh, and again, we'll go estimals because uh, we've already kind of ramped up. So we have 90, 91, 87, 89. Uh, and as we approach that 90 mark, uh, but we don't quite have uh, 90 here, what we can do to add to this, uh, there's more that we can do to add more EHP without any additional mods. Uh, we can simply overheat, and that brings us up to 1,700 uh, HP per second. And we're going to go ahead and go back to our monitor and figure out... Uh, exactly how much that is. We will say 89 average resist. Uh, so if we go here, look at about 89, we get to multiply this by 9. So 1,700. Uh, calculator? Where'd it go? I just had it. Uh, utilities calculator. Uh, 1758 by 9. We're at 15,000 DPS. Just by overheating this, we got almost 50% more and plugging our holes. That's insane. We aren't even close to done yet. Because there's a lot more that we can do. Uh, we can overheat our hardeners. Bringing our average resists uh, above 90. Uh, meaning we can multiply this by 10. That's 1,700. Uh, and uh, so it's thermal and EM. It's 94 and 93. That is, that is so unreal. Um, but again, we're not done, but this is where we end in game. We have to go to Pypha, uh, to do more. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and import and we're going to copy this to my clipboard and I have a program called Pypha. I actually already have it loaded. Uh, I did not update it, but that's okay. There's been no updates to this idea. Uh, and we're going to go fit and we're going to import from my clipboard. And it should just grab the fit. 
where is it? In, import, export, copy to clipboard, fit, import, import from clipboard, control V. So now we have this exact same fitting in, uh, in, e, in, in PIFA. And PIFA is a, a really weird thing. Uh, it, it, it seems like weird when you look at it and it, it doesn't quite jive. Uh, but it, it has a few more tools that the in-game fitting window doesn't have. Like you can simulate drugs, you can simulate command burst, and you can simulate a couple of other things. Whereas to simulate these things in game, you actually have to expose yourself to them uh, to get the in-game fitting tool to show you what they mean uh, rather than uh, trying to do this further uh, because we would have to actually purchase the ship and undock in it and apply these bonuses to it. Uh, we're going to go ahead and throw it into Pypha to be able to simulate the rest. Uh, Pypha also gives you a lot of really nifty tools. Uh, we can see its uh, EHP per second, uh, its recharge rates, the effective overall tank uh, being 125. Again, this is cold. Remember, we were hot when we simulated. So we're going to go ahead and put these on hot. If you left click on them, they go hot. Uh, so we're at 21,000 EHP effective uh, versus Omni damage. Uh, you can change the damage profile. Uh, I'm trying to remember how to do it. Do that. Uh, so you click on EH, uh, HP and EHP. And then we can do uh, pretty much any kind of damage profile. Uh, so we can say versus uh, various missions. Uh, we can do uh, NPC types, Sanchez incursions. We can check abyssals uh, against asteroids. Asteroids. Oh, in asteroid belts. Uh, we can check against burners because they have the burner specific ones. It's it's pretty nifty. And I will provide a link to this tool as well uh, because it's pretty helpful. But let's say we're trying to tank against hybrid uh, and we can say void. Uh, our EHP goes up significantly if we decide to go like thermal kinetic for the, the hardeners. Uh, we can get more for a specific one. However, for the purpose of keeping this video as simple as possible, we're going to play with maximizing an overall uh, DPS set. Uh, so uniform uh, being what we're calculating against. All right, so what's the next step? The next step is that we can add in uh, some implants. And if we right click on this, uh, this set, we can apply an implant set and we can decide which ones to use. So it, Amulets increase uh, HP, Ascendancies increase warp speed, Asclepians increase armor reps, Centurions, I can't remember what they do, Crystals uh, increase shield rep, which is what we're after. And if we add a low grade crystal set that adds 4,000 EHP for a uh, 920 million -esque estimated value. But let's go ahead and apply an implant set. We'll go ahead and go all the way and throw in that high grade set this brings us up, so the entire high grade set together uh, adds in a total of 37.5%. Uh, additional shields, bringing us all the way up to 33,000 HP per second versus a random damage type. And then the uh, HP shield rate, uh, the actual rep rate is 200, 2,702 per second. Do you think we're done? I don't think we're done yet. There's these things called drugs, and I have a video on these drugs uh, made fairly recently. Uh, and there are two kinds uh, that we can add. If we go to the market and we go to implants and boosters, uh, we can select boosters. And then in implant slot one, there's a drug called the blue pill. And when you consume a blue pill, you learn about things that you've never learned before, like the matrix and that we are all living batteries and all of that fun stuff. You also gain some awesome powers of shield regeneration. So you get additional shield bursts whenever you go into the matrix. Did I get that backwards? Do you eat the red pill or do you eat the blue pill? Anyways, I digress. Let's eat a blue pill and see what happens. 35%. I believe it's 35%. So show info uh, just like in the uh, in the game, we can show info. See our attributes. We get a... Or do is it improved? No, it, it's strong. Chance side effect, 30%. Uh, 
shield capa- uh, uh, shield boost bonus of 30%. So that was 30% more, meaning our shield boost went from 2,702 to 3,512 HP per second. Unreal. Click on this EHP tab. We are now tanking for the 3,000 DPS. For the record, that is roughly two Erebus's worth of DPS. Or two Nyx's. Because an Erebus with capital guns does roughly 20,000 DPS. This can tank a Titan. Assuming the Titan can actually apply to it. Um, That is roughly 55 catalysts. That is a lot of a lot of um i think 1500 dps is how much dps a uh a talos does this is a lot of tank even if just for a moment this is insane amounts of tank like absolutely insane 43000 wrap your head around 43000 dps it takes that much to break a keep star I will explain the weakness to this ship, and it's it, it, they're very vulnerable, but just the numbers you can make in this game, it, it's so much fun. And then there is one more drug that adds an additional 9%. We have these hard shell drugs, and they come in DBDOS 3 to, to 9, and they will give you the percentage of the thing for tank. So let's go ahead and pop one of those as well, because they're in a different slot, so we can pop both the drugs. And that brings our EHP tank to 46,000 DPS in an Omni tank thing, and that is almost 4k HP raw. Remember, we didn't go and put three sh the boosters on. We didn't go and make, like, you know, like, th this is insane. Nobody would ever actually build this, but still, 46,000 DPS. What a silly thing to build. But wait! There's more. There's this thing called Command Burst. And uh, they add a lot of tank. Let's go ahead and add a fit for Command Fits. I actually have a Slipnir uh, built up and ready for Perfect Command Burst and with the implant and everything. Uh, so we're just going to add that. And then uh, what this does uh, is it gives 22.5% additional resists and 22.5% additional um, HP per second. If we go ahead and open up my calculator here. Uh, we can go ahead and multiply those together. So if we do 22.5 times 22.5. Uh, we don't end up with 25% more resists. We actually end up... 0.225 multiplied by 0.225 equals 0 0.05. That is not right. It's it's one. Uh, I I did this wrong. Okay, all clear. I I I'm I'm doing unedited clips or an unedited YouTube video. We're we're just trying it for for style. Uh, 1.225 uh, because this is 22.5 percent over times. Well, let's clear this. 1.225 times 1.225 equals 1.5x. This means that the command boost will give us a roughly 50% bonus to our overall tank, which is insane. So now from the 46, 45,000 EHP tank, we get to 67,432 estimated tank uh, with 93, 93, 90, 92% resist. There are projections. We can add in a wormhole fit. I can't remember which one is the shield one. Uh, but I believe... Is it Wolf? Wolf is, um... Is it Pulsar? No, Pulsar added shields. Is 
No. I can't remember. I'm going to Google it real quick. Eve Online Wormhole Types. And this gets into uh, a whole nother rabbit hole. I'm just looking for a basic typing here. You know, wormhole, Eve Online wormhole effects. That's what we want to search. Is it this one that I wanted? All right, so these have system effects, shield capacity. We have capacitor recharge time, armor resist. Uh, it looks like that there is not an effect Oh, this is a uh, pulsar. So we have that uh, black hole has missile and ship velocity. Cataclysmic has remote uh, rep amount. Magnetar has uh, just raw damage. Red giant has an overheat bonus. So we could throw. Let's throw a um, a magnetar in here because overheating does make things better and it doesn't hurt our tanking. So we can go ahead and add uh, an environmental effects, wormhole, magnetar, and then we'll say class six because that's the most in intense. And it said it helped overheating, but it doesn't appear to be affecting it. So we will do away with that. Uh, there are other effects as well. Uh, I'm trying to think of, of other things that we can add. We got the implants. Yeah, this is this is about what they can do. Sixty-seven thousand EHP. So I actually built one uh, like this that was not dead space fit, and I accidentally killed the fit. Uh, however, uh, we can check it out in game because I have it saved. Uh, but we built something like this in order to just have uh, resistance. Uh, except instead of all this like dead space and everything, we had tier two. So if I go holes and fits. And we go with, uh, I think it was a snipey boy. No, it wasn't that. It wasn't that. Nope, I, I, I just lost it. Anyways. Um, no, I didn't close that. Where's the other pipe for window? There it is. Uh, this is what we came up with. 67,000 HP with this is flyable in high sec because we don't have any projected effects we have command bursts so you could in theory get this and this would be very difficult to kill so now i want to go over kind of what what would kill this um first off this has very little actual ehp per second so we we, we were talking about bursts this time uh it can sustain 208 raw HP per second, which equates to about 50, uh, 5,400 DPS is how much it can s sustain its tank indefinitely. Um, these ships have one major weakness, uh, and that is that they don't have strong capacitors. Uh, their capacitors are relatively weak, and if you uh, put new pressure on them, uh, they, they get nuded out. And or uh, also without these silly fits that have crazy overheating on them, a damage control, like an officer damage control and whatnot, they tend to have low total EHP values. This is with command burst at 102k. That means that if 10 tornadoes were to suddenly shoot this thing, it would die. Uh, that's all it takes. Uh, or five tornadoes getting two shots uh, in a time where it couldn't uh, repair all the way. Uh, which it should be able to repair between two tornadoes, so it'd take a little bit more. Um, but that being said, this is absolutely insane. And then if we were to try and make this cap stable, uh, what we would have to do is we would have to take uh, at least two of these off, and we would have to do... 
uh, where would it be? Ship equipment. Look at engineering equipment. And then we would need to do at least a cap battery. Uh, it, it, it is runnable. What we could do is we could put a cap booster on and the cap booster would extend, but it's not stable because uh, you can run out of cap boosters. Uh, the Therofier is the strongest of the cap boosters, uh, but I tend to re prefer Republic Fleet. Uh, I believe the best... Uh, so our, our, our stable EHP is going to go through the roof here as we approach cap stability. Uh, I believe that one battery is solid. We're going to take one of these off. Uh, and notice taking these off doesn't affect our uh, our total EHP per second that we can get. We're trying to get these two numbers to be the same. Uh, we're going to go into rigs. I'm going to go shield. We're going to switch those rigs uh, for the capacitor solidifiers. Our shield rigs uh, and then the operational solidifiers add the resist the capacitor safe safeguards will increase our ability to run the tank quite a bit. So we're up to 7,440 uh, running cap stable. And then we can go ahead and take off a couple of these gyro stabilizers. And then we can put on what are called uh, in the engineering equipment. We can do uh, one more thing, which would be a cap recharger. And the cap recharger tends to be a little bit better than, uh, than the battery after the first mod. So we'll go ahead and do, I'm not sure which one's actually the best, uh, but we'll go ahead and for the sake of simplicity, go with the True Sancha to 9,986 uh, cap stable uh, tanking. And then we can go ahead and get into the lows. Uh, we have two options for increasing our cap in the lows. And that is a, or actually three options, power diagnostic systems, which gives a little bit of cap shield capacity and power grid uh or we can do faster flux coils uh which increases your your cap recharge at a penalty of decreasing your uh total capacitor amount and uh we're talking about the we need to solve minus 33 or we can do uh capacitor where are they uh faster power relays which uh, decrease your shield boost amount, which is what we don't want, uh, and uh, decrease your resistance. So if you're like an armor tank, the, 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 fl the power relays are better. But if you're a shield tank, the flux coils are better. Uh, and unfortunately, fluxes don't have fancy mods. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and put a couple of flux coils until we're cap stable. Up to 18,000. That third one should bring us to cap stability. And we are at a resting... Uh, ability to tank at about 20,000 DPS, we can turn on our modules and the thing will just sit here and survive 20,000 DPS. Uh, more reasonable on the fitting, uh, we can switch these guys out a little bit and we can go ahead and put on, uh, in shields, we can put on something a little bit more reasonable that is actually flyable and go shield boosters, boost amplifiers, uh, these Pythom X types aren't too bad and then the actual boosters that's a boost amplifier uh, extra large we can throw on a pythom x type again we dropped to 8766 and then uh we can then put the hardeners on well uh not hold on armor it's shield hardeners and then multi-spectrum and then a reasonable one would be pythom c's uh, we're still at 16,000 DPS, and then if we overheat, uh, we still hit that 20,000 uh, EHP of tank. Again, effective HP is at 140,000, so this would take between 7 and 14 tornadoes to alpha, uh, depending on, on luck. But uh, it can also be nuded out. We only have plus 3 gigajoules of cap. Which means if this gets hit by newts, uh, this number would drop drastically as you put cap pressure. The expenditure of the shield boost amplifier is around... I can't remember how much it is uh, per second for the shield boost amplifier, but something like 60 or 70. Uh, anyways, if you guys like this video, I, I know I got a little... I was like super high energy in the beginning and then we kind of like wore out, but we did a unedited 40 minute long video 
uh, talking about just building a crazy tank on a Varger. And it's a fun rabbit hole to go down to play an EFT. If you guys watch this entire video, make sure you like, comment, subscribe down below. Enjoy the video in the future. Uh, or uh, if you want to see more videos in the future, uh, let me know. And uh, all the comments, all the likes, all the, the things do mean a lot to me. Fly fun. Enjoy your time in EVE Online and keep on bringing people up. And Nika and I will see you in the next one.